Well, hey, welcome to Dr. Scott's Sandwich Shop. And just like Quiznos or Subway or any other sandwich shop on the planet, there's something very simple about sandwiches. They're always pretty much the same. There's a top bun, top piece of bread. There's whatever goes in the middle, and there's the thing on the bottom. So we all understand what the word sandwich is. But we also understand at a Quiznos, at a, sub, at a Subway, and at Dr. Scott's Sandwich Shop that there are hundreds and hundreds, thousands indeed, variations on how to make a sandwich. And the same thing happens to be true for quote sandwiches, the subject of today's lecture. So no matter what essay you're working on, if you'll scroll over here to files and click on it, you will find that the quote sandwich bar is open and it's under Q for quote sandwiches, MLNQ. Here we go, quote sandwiches. There's a couple handouts in here. I'll click on the top one. Don't panic, it comes out upside down because that's the way it's scanned in the PDF. Oh, it didn't, hey, goody. All right, so if it does, this is the button that you push to make it rotate. So here's how to make a quote sandwich. You will notice that I stole this from an antique handout back in the days of Xeroxes over and over from a student who brought it to me from his favorite high school teacher. So it's not an advanced college lesson, although every single professional writer on the planet knows exactly what I'm talking about, and I'll prove that to you in this screen test. So how do you make a quote sandwich? Well, the first thing you have to do is introduce your quote. That's the top bun. Then you have to quote the quote. That's the, that's the burger. That's the, that's, the, you know, that's the tofu burger, whatever, you wanna, whatever it is that you're putting in there. I don't want to offend my vegan friends. And down here on the bottom is the gluten-free, the whatever. But anyway, there's a top bun, there's a burger, and then there's a middle bun. It's a three-step process, just like waltzing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So all I mean by quote sandwich is every single time you quote, introduce the quote, quote the quote, and follow up. Now, here's where we get into the sandwich bar part. Because just like when you walk into Subway or anywhere else, there's hundreds of ingredients, well, not hundreds, there's dozens of ingredients. And they can, be, they can be combined in literally thousands and thousands of ways. And the example that we're using is a little antique, so I'm going to introduce it for you right now. It's not easy being green. Do you understand what that is? If not, then this is one reason you need an introduction. So there's a super famous, back in the old school, probably your parents watched this, Muppets Generation. I'll play you just a little. I think you'll get the audio. But this is Kermit the Frog singing his famous all-time hit, It's Not Easy Being Green. It's not that easy being green. Okay, so we got it. Now you know what we're quoting. So back over here, it's not easy being green is our quote. There's a million ways to quote that, but we'll just do it as a sentence. Now, to introduce it, you've got all kinds of different templates. Um, what what I, they say I say would call templates. As Kermit the Frog points out, Kermit the Frog profoundly states, etc., etc. Down here on the other end, at the bottom, you've got all kinds of explanations for why you could be quoting this. What does this have to do with your thesis? What are you trying to support? It's not going to help to throw quotes in like croutons in some salad for random reasons. It just makes you look like you have no idea how to write and no idea how to support an argument. So the quoting that we're doing is in support of an argument in an academic context. So watch how fun this little handout is. As Kermit the Frog points out, I'm just going to choose random ones and put them together randomly. As Kermit the Frog points out, it's not easy being green. Here, Kermit is referring to the prejudice our society has against green creatures. So if you're writing something about the sociology and construction of race as a construct, then that's why you're suddenly following up with, here Kermit is referring to the prejudice our society has against green creatures, right? But maybe you're going to say, according to Kermit the Frog, it's not easy being green, because judging from his peeling skin, we can see Kermit is right. The depletion of ozone makes life difficult not only for humans, but for green animals as well. So if you're writing the eco-sustainability paper, that's your follow-up. Tricky part about quote sandwiches, there's all kinds of standard ways to introduce a quote. And of course, the quote is whatever the quote is. What comes on the bottom bun is totally up to you because this is you telling me this is how this supports my thesis. And I don't know what your thesis is. I don't know what you're trying to support. It's one reason that it's crucial to put the bottom in bun in there. Imagine if the Subway sandwich guy handed you the sandwich without the bottom piece of bread. It would be a mess. And the same thing happens when you hand a quote sandwich to your readers and you don't tell them why you just quoted that. Quotes do not speak for themselves. You speak for them. Don't also assume that people know who's speaking, especially in a research paper where you're switching up different people. Even if we know, okay, in the case of the class I'm making this for, you're writing about Tufeki. All right, we know who Tufeki is because we read her book. But other people don't know, or maybe you were talking, maybe you were quoting from Time Magazine and New York and the New York Times and all these other sources, and now you're back to Tufeki. So it is super important every single time you quote, introduce the quote, quote the quote and follow up. And you can have fun playing with this yourself. 
Um, if this is, if you're rolling your eyes at me right now and you're saying, OMG, Dr. Scott is teaching us a sub high school lesson with green Muppet characters using a high school handout and I paid good money for this class and I'm writing to the Dean right now. Well, hold on a minute because there's another handout in here and it uses fancier words to say the same thing. So if you don't want to talk about, if you don't want to talk about uh, quote sandwiches and Kermit the Frog, then how about we talk about using signal phrases to introduce, to integrate source material. Now do you feel like you're in college? It's the same lesson, right? Look at this. What's boldface? This is not my handout, by the way. I stole this from another teacher too, because every teacher on the planet is going to teach you the same thing. Avoid dropping quotations into your writing without warning. Instead, provide clear signal phrases, such as according to Williams, to prepare the reader for the source material. And then they show you a whole list of what you would call templates and they say I say in the words of researcher Herbert Terrace blah 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 radio host Tom and Ray Magliozzi offer a persuasive art counter argument anthropologist Flora Davis has noted that now again there's not an exact formula for this maybe I don't need to know that Flora Davis is an anthropologist or maybe I need to know no more maybe I need to know that Flora Davis is an anthropologist at the University of California at Berkeley or that radio house Tom and Ray Magliozzi are also known as the car car guys and were the most popular Sunday radio show on national public radio for 20 years or whatever right so the point here is to use these templates as the top bun in your quote sandwich then quote the quote now, why isn't this filled in over here on the right side? Because we don't know what your thesis is. Okay, now, those of you that are still thinking that this is crazy and no one would ever do this, I want to show you two sources here, if my computer will let me. Um, I want to show you, first of all, that Tefeki does this all the time. So here is Tefeki saying, for example, one working journalist described the pressure she was under this way. I first censor myself and blah, 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 blah. The quote ends here. You don't always have to quote that much. Such pressure on the media from government officials and corporate co uh, owners is common around the world. Now, notice, perfect quote sandwich. Here's the top bun. Whoops. <laughs> Here's the top bun. Well, I lost the top bun. There it is. Here's the top bun. One working journalist described. Now, she decided to say working journalist. She decided not to use the person's name, probably because she's writing about mm, Turkey. Um, and we would not necessarily recognize the name. But again, she's introducing her source and telling, her, un, telling us under what context was this written. Then, very clearly following up with a sentence here, such pressure on the media from government officials and corporate owners is common around the world. So this is not just an example that applies to Turkey only. It's an example that applies worldwide, and of course that's what Tefeki's book is about. Now you're going to tell me, oh, by the way, I could show you this in virtually any book by virtually any professional writer. It's student writers who think they don't know how to, to think they don't need to do this, which means they don't know how to do this, which means like in the sandwich shop, you don't even know how to make a sandwich, and you don't know how to cook yet, and Scott is going to teach you how to cook better. Last example. Here's a student writer from one of the student papers for this particular assignment. Here she says, about the formation of the movement, Emily Witt of the New Yorker writes, and then she uses a block quote format, which is fine. I wouldn't use too many of them because it's like styrofoam. It'll fill up your paper with too much fluff. If you put something in a block quote format, it better be important. Notice also, side note, in MLA, block quotes are indicated by indentation only. There's no quotation marks, which is weird, but that's MLA. They make it weird, so I get paid to teach you. But notice... We introduce the quote about the formation of the movement, Emily Witt of the New Yorker writes, then we quote the quote, and then we follow up immediately with a explanation. Right away, there are a few clear similarities and differences between the formation of this protest and the one that Tefeki discussed in her book. So we're making the connection between the quote and the book, which is what the paper is all about. Hello? And... So here, that's a perfect quote sandwich for you to look at. And if I scroll down to the next page, you'll see that this isn't just something that this student does once. They do it every single time they quote. Here she says, in the next paragraph, according to CNN, they attracted the attention of celebrities like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Michelle and Barack Obama, Miley Cyrus, Amal and George Clooney, among others. And notice that even though she's also using an MLA and text citation correctly, I might add, she does not then... She does not then um, <clears throat> think that she doesn't need to introduce her source. Notice also that you can use quote sandwiches and should use quote sandwiches even when you're paraphrasing, which means there's not a direct quote, but you're paraphrasing information that you got elsewhere. 
And then following up, these same sources also cast suspicion on the, on the online protest itself. So here's three or four different sources in one, in one paragraph, each one distinctly introduced. I know this one is from CNN. I know why it's in there. I know this one is from the New York Times. I know why it's in there. And she's following up each time to tell me what's up. One of the most clear differences between the Never Again movement that sparked the March for Our Lives was that these students had a very clear message to deliver to Washington, D.C. All right. Now, Again, it depends on what you're trying to prove. That's what this student was trying to prove. But no matter what you're trying to prove, one, two, three, one, two, three, quote sandwich, quote sandwich, quote sandwich, every single time you quote, Scott's sandwich shop is now closed because your sandwich shop is now open. I expect you to deliver delicious, custom made quote sandwiches for every single one of your quotes to every single reader you'll ever have for the rest of your life because that's what makes a professional writer sound professional, academic, scholarly expert, confident, and proud of their sources. 